What is up down and sideways? It's not like you're beautiful individuals. We are back. It's Lee Gunlock, Eric, and Mark here with you for a little bit of more off-season news in the LCK. We already know that Canyon moving on to potentially greener pastures with Gen G. Not going to be on D+, but they waste no time saying it's okay. We've got the face of the franchise locked up. Showmaker Three more years with the squad, which means we're getting a whole lot more copy pastas about broken champions. <laughs> Bring it on is what I say. And that's pretty much the mentality of Showmaker staying, renewing his contract with D plus Kia. He says, I'm D plus Kia until I die. This is the only squad that I'm playing for in the LCK. He was pretty much, if they weren't interested, he said he was going to sit out if he didn't have a spot with D plus Kia type of thing. Which Find someone as loyal to you as Showmaker is to D plus, my God. I, I don't know what they're doing to my guy to make him this type of loyal, but you love to see this type of commitment from a player and we love to see a player like Showmaker stay in his role and stay at this type of level competing. It looks like we are also gonna get a bit of a reinvigoration for this D plus Kia team and how they reiterate and try to reestablish themselves within that uh, power priority tower that is the LCK's top teams. Yeah, we got rumored still, not fully confirmed, but what the rest of the roster will be looking like. Kellen, the only other returning member besides Showmaker from last year, which may be a little surprising given some of his world's performances, but gonna be paired alongside Aiming. Coming over from KT, okay, that's a pretty big bet for them. Lucid getting promoted from the challenger scene to replace Canyon. Kingin coming over, I know a lot of people are wanting, waiting to see Thanatos also get promoted because him and Lucid have won two of the last four challenger splits and the last four they finished at worst top two. So these two and D plus challengers in general have been dominating that scene. And that's really why there are some question marks, uh, you know, mostly towards that top side of the map for this new iteration of D plus Kia. You mentioned Kellen being that returning member. I think there still is some potential to build up and scratch off the surface of what he can offer. But you are very right that it was a rough ending towards the year and a bit of an exposure, I think, at the world's event on what is necessary to level up for him individually. Aiming coming on in, we saw pretty great things with KT Rolster throughout the summer split and even still some pretty solid stuff. Worlds, but at the end of the day, not enough to prove that you are in that upper echelon, that next tier of ADCs. And especially after what we have seen put out there from Mr. Gumayushi winning a world championship, that level is going to be at an all time high in the LCK next year. Aiming, got to step it up for this D plus Kia roster. And then you go over towards that top side that you were mentioning, looking at King and Lucid. Starting with Lucid taking over for Canyon, this is something that I think a lot of people have seen coming for quite a little bit. It's tough with a player like Canyon and how good he is to say, all right, now is the time to make that type of switch. Obviously, situation has dictated that now is the time to make this move for D plus Kia, which makes it all the more questioning why you aren't using that additional follow-up move as Thanatos in the top side, someone who has been so incredibly dominant through the last two uh, challenger seasons in the LCK uh, lower league. And it really is a question because then you're bringing in Kingen onto this contract and you're trying to make a bet that's going to be world's finals. Kingen showing up that DRX Aatrox skin. Well, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that one other team has already tried to make that evaluation and try to make that bet that it is world championship. Uh, they didn't watch any VODs from last year? Uh, well, they certainly weren't watching the Hanwha Life ones because that is the squad that did make that bet last year. And almost entirety of last seasons, we did not see that world champion king and ever show up for the team. If this is going to be a competitive D plus Kia, especially knowing the shifting around, the heavyweights, the returning championship squad of T1 awaiting them in the LCK, it's going to have to be world champion D uh, a King and, or else he should be losing that spot to someone like Thanatos trying to rise up and establish himself. Yeah, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if we do see that promotion in the top lane happening at some point in 2024. But either way, this roster looks like a solid four spot because ahead of them, you got that team shelling off King and Hanwha life. Rumors no more. They got... 
by the way, watch all these announcement videos. Hanwha Life is going <laughs> above and beyond. They're doing insane domino setups like it's 2013 when these were super cool. They got jet skis coming, artists coming in. But they basically said, all right, Gen G, you're blowing things up. We'll take those guys because Doran, Peanut, and Delight now joining Zeka and Viper on this Hanwha Life squad. They're trying to be T1 killers with the lights for Khan and Doran matching up against Zeus. But this, you can slot this squad on paper right behind Gen G and obviously returning T1. I'm very interested by this Hanwha Life roster, this experiment that's going to come through, this mishmashing of the Gen G roster with arguably the only two real pieces that you wanted to keep from what was going on with Hanwha Life last year in Zeka and Viper is going to be where we see what we've got with them and how they can contend with a team like T1. As you mentioned, some very established T1 killers in players like Doran in the top side and as well as Delight in the bottom lane. I think Delight on their recon is something that we saw quite a bit at the World Tournament, but I don't think we saw enough of him on anything else really is the problem. And of course, that is due to a very short runtime at this event from Gen G, which he shares his blame in, and as well as does Mr. Peanut in the jungle for Hanwha Life. I think this is certainly an upgrade, a stability improvement over everything that they had last year, whether it's going to be that next tier, that next capable level, or that dominant fashion that we know and have seen from Peanut in the LCK, at least domestically, that's going to be the question for Hanwha Life. I'm really excited to see this bot lane perform because Delight is a mega upgrade out of the level we were getting from life last year on Hanwha. Best support Viper's probably been playing with since Mako and even that last year on EDG with Mako. That was a little bit suspect. So we're going back to world championship year for Viper since he's had a support at this level. Curious to see if this new... Uh, new setup for Doran means he gets more avenues to carry. Be the focal point of teams. He's already got that built-in synergy with Peanut. And by the way, Peanut returning here. Technically, he's returning to the Rocks Tigers. 2016 MVP level Peanut all these years later. Oh my God. You can always come home is the way that this one works out. Peanut finding his way back to that Rocks family even all the way disconnected from those years as we are happy to see that one. Doran is right. You're in an opportunity where you can take this explosive style. You can kind of, you know, have an opportunity to grow and bet on yourself a little bit more than you ever would have had in the environment of Genji, in the environment of players like Chovy, like Pays. And yes, you're moving into one right now with something like Zekka and Viper in the bottom lane. And I think Viper is going to benefit quite a little bit, as you mentioned, with Light stepping it on up. The most consistent, best performing member of Hanwha Life last year. Pretty good to, to augment, try to get him a little bit more help in that lane specifically. But Doran, having that ability, what this picture is going to be for this Hanwha Life team, will be asked to play something different, something special, something spicy, I think, at times in that top lane going to be time to see if what Doran can cook up there. We're still waiting for all this new format changes to the LCS in 2024, but one of the latest rumors, it's not directly the LCS, but the challenger scene, the NACL, we're hearing they might be transitioning to some fearless mode in 2024. And of course, if you're not familiar, this is the pick band where once you pick a champion in a best of, that champion's done. You can't play it again. When the LDL, the challenger scene of the LPL was trying this, you still got bans on top of that per game, which made for these game threes where you had to go like 20 plus champions deep on each side. Yeah, so I, I don't know if it's gonna be that wacky. It's gonna be a little bit more scaled back and a little bit more reserved in that type of fashion. But in comparison to traditional draft, yes, this is very much that fearless style that you're looking at and what you're going to be have on on for offer i'm all for it. i think this is absolutely a great move a great experimentation for this league and and really what you look at is probably a test run for what you could expect from this type of thing at maybe a even higher level like an lcs like a major region is something i think we can look at and experience what are the pros and cons of this style of this format because as you mentioned with the one that we had in the LDL, we had the bands on top of it. It really did push down into the deep, dark depths of champion pools, of what is going to be possible to be played. And what is, 
you know, you know, you might know the very meta of the very tippity top of the S rank and S plus and all that stuff. But do you know who's the very best out of the B and the C ranks and champions and things like that that you got into? I think that we're going to have a little bit higher, higher levels of that meta with what we've got with no ban on top of it. But the way that Fearless works out, that type of risk and, and reward management of taking those champions at the right time, I'm very excited to see this one come through. And I think this is going to be the natural progression of the game as more and more champions are released. We're already calling five bands isn't enough for each team. Well, you can't just all of a sudden have 10 bands in these games. So I think, you know, not being able to play these champions more than once, number one, encourages diversity of champions as a whole in the scene. And number two, if you're a three trick, you know, there's three or four champions you're really comfortable on. All of a sudden, you play one game on a comfort pick, the opposing team takes the other, and things are looking rough. You got to have some adaptability as a player at that point. You got to be able to know. And, you know, and then as a, as a team, you can evaluate and you can identify, and you might put a high value on someone that can come in, play as a certain champion, and that is your lockdown, 100% comfort, win or die type of situation thing. You might also have a player who maybe isn't. Super proficient on one, but he's got them all. He's got the skills to be consistent. These type of things can come through. Something I'd love to see from this fearless draft. We love all the time those compositions you get where you're like, whoa, this game they played gin. These type of things that you're talking about, that's what you're going to get with fearless draft a lot more often where you're going to be like, wow, this series, they had this thing happening. Game two, game three, whatever it is. Fearless draft can help create those type of situations, those type of compositions that brings that excitement and brings that interest into the game. Picture a, few, a future world championship, game five, fearless draft, deep, dark recesses of your champion pool, and Faker goes, give me the Master Yi. It's time. Let me pull it out. Game five, it's all that's left on the table for me. Oh, that's what, you know, that's when the real, the other thing that can be interesting with fearless draft the deep, dark technologies that have been crafted, have been resourced over time in League of Legends. Can't be the times to bust out those type of duos. Yeah, the Master Yi and Terra combo. That could be one that we're seeing at the time. And I feel like a lot of the time, even pro players get a little bit stale, just go through the motions of the standard powerful picks and... You know, drafting like this is going to force them to kind of do some theory crafting and brainstorming about things that are, as you said, C tier, D tier, even down the list for these counter matchups. So I hope this is just the beginning and this type of draft gets implemented in all the major regions. But for now, NACL going to get a little bit of a viewership bump because people are going to be interested to see how this plays out. That is it today, though. For League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you, beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.